Hi, I'm Gareth Pronovost, and I help my clients unlock the full potential of Airtable. In this video, I'm going to be showing you something from my personal stash. This is actually uh, a base that I created for my wife, uh, dedicated to simplifying our workflows and processes around grocery shopping. And while it might be a simple example, perhaps a bit silly, it is going to showcase two different things that are incredibly valuable for any business or uh, startup. Now, the first one of those is, as I mentioned before, workflows. So this video is going to sh go through the different workflows that go into our uh, grocery shopping, and that's going to be demonstrated in this Airtable base exactly how that has simplified that workflow. And then the second thing this video is going to really do is dive into views. And we're going to be using those views to drive those different workflows. Views are a part of Airtable that give you uh, specific settings and specific sorting and filtering and grouping uh, around your data to allow you to see exactly what you need at exactly a particular time. So without further ado, let's jump into it and you can see what I'm talking about. Welcome to Entrepreneurship by the Numbers, where we help unlock the potential of your business with data-driven metrics. Okay, so Airtable has already provided in its template section a grocery list uh, template and uh, started off looking at that one and it didn't quite solve the exact workflows that we needed for the way that we do our grocery shopping on a weekly basis. So before I jump into the template that I created, I'm going to quickly go through what that workflow looks like so that it makes better sense uh, as things are unveiled within the template. So first things we would do is my wife and I would get together on a Saturday morning or so and have a discussion about what meals we wanted to plan for the coming week. And so, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, what are we planning on having for the uh, next seven days? Now that's step one. Step two is we would take the ingredients that would be required to make those meals and write them out uh, on a list. Step two. Step three is take that list into the kitchen and find out of the ingredients on that list, do we have any of them already? A lot of the time, uh, you know, spices, for example, are uh, going to be in the cupboard already, or maybe we have an onion left over from the previous week, that kind of thing. So those get removed from the list. That's the third step. Fourth step is taking that list and breaking it into store. So uh, some of our shopping we have to do at the liquor store. Some of our shopping has to happen at, or we like to have happen at Costco. Uh, some of it happens at the local grocery store. Some of it at Sprouts or Whole Foods. So, you know, you get the idea. And so then we would have these different lists broken up by store, and then we would take those lists into the uh, grocery shopping experience. And, uh, and so we had all that access right then and there. So this uh, template here on your screen is the template that comes from uh, Airtable. And again, it's not really ideal for that workflow. So the template that I created is here. And of course, I will share this in the notes. And you'll see here on this template, we've got ingredients here, and then we have recipes. And there's a lot of data on these tabs, but we are going to use these views to filter the data to just the relevant data depending on what step we are in in the process. So let's go ahead and add a new recipe. So I've already started here. You see I've started to add the Greek lamb wraps and I'm going to go up and check out this recipe. I've just found this online and I'm going to print this as a PDF. And the reason I do this is because I don't like the, uh, I don't like to have the situation where if that link breaks or if some something happens in the future that I can't get back to that URL, I want to have a copy of it. So I'm going to grab this PDF that I just saved, and I saved it here on my desktop. I'm going to go ahead and drag that into the uh, base, and then the other thing I'm going to do is in fact grab that URL just so that I have it there. So the other part of this is going to be how many servings does this make? And this is going to be impart, important for the math that comes up later. So taking a look here at the recipe, trying to find out, let's see where this says. Ah, here we go, eight servings, apologize for that. Okay, so eight servings there. And what kind of style of food is this? In this case, I would consider this to be Mediterranean and this is gonna be a crock pot meal. 
Those are the only parts that I need to fill out on this recipe per se. And the rest of it is going to be done on the ingredients table where I'm going to link ingredients to the recipe. So right now I'm just really setting up this new recipe. Don't worry about uh, these additional fields just yet. We're going to get to those in a moment. So going into the recipe, then I'm going to uh, bring the recipe into a different window so that I can just enter these ingredients in here. So we've got uh, lamb shoulder, so, that, so I'm going to enter, and you would do the same thing here if you wanted to use this. And you have to enter a quantity. In this case, it's two pounds. So you have a field for quantity and then a field for volume. And then you can link it to that recipe. So the Greek lamb wraps is where that's going. Now you have to tell it where are you buying that lamb shoulder. And in my case, we would buy this at Sprouts. And then what department is it? That's the uh, butcher department. And so this is essentially the uh, series of steps that you're going to take for everything in that, uh, in, in that recipe. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward here and have all that entered for us. Okay, so now that that data has been entered, we can go back to that recipe and we can see that all of these ingredients are now linked to this particular recipe. All right, great. So that is how you enter a new recipe and ingredients into the uh, template. Now for the really cool part is how it has made our workflows more efficient. So remember the first step is sitting down and really getting around uh, what are we planning for the next week in terms of food. So we have a special view for that and that's going to look at our recipes it's called the weekly meal planning view, as you see right here. I select this, and what has happened is we have a sort on the uh, food style. So if we feel like American, we can just look at our different recipes that are American style, or Asian style, or Mediterranean style. You can add as many as you like. And then also, we have a preparation method here. And this is important for us because we only have one crock pot in the house, so it's not something where we are uh, you know, we, we want to be smart about that when we're planning. But basically, you know, you could imagine having a hundred different recipes that you like in here and just having this visual representation is pretty cool. But the really neat part is you can just come in and check mark which of these you want to make. So let's say, for example, we were going to make uh, this bento box, which is uh, delicious, by the way. Uh, if we were going to make this, uh, you know, my wife and I were both eating this so we would have you know 10 of those Monday through Friday and just to keep it simple let's say we made baked potato soup and again uh, we were doing 10 of these for the week for dinner uh, let's say and we'll just keep it at that so that is how you would do your meal planning here in the template now once that's done if we go over to ingredients we can look at a different view so remember the second step in our workflow used to be that once we've done our meal planning, then we had to come up with a list of all the different ingredients. Well, we can look at that by looking at our shopping prep view. So now this is pulling in based on what we've checkmarked and how many uh, servings that we've said that we're going to be making of each of these. It's doing the math and saying this is how much of these different ingredients you need to buy. Now we have this shopping prep because remember the next step, step three, is going into the kitchen and making sure that we have all or and, and removing from the list any ingredient that we already have in stock. So I could take this list into the kitchen and let's say I found that I already had soy sauce, well I could just check that. And you'll notice that when I do that, that is now moved to the very bottom and is removed from the uh, blanks of already in stock. So similarly I might uh, remove a couple of these, maybe I already have chicken stock, Maybe I also already have uh, peanut sauce, and uh, let's suppose that I already had salt and seasoned salt as well. So as I'm checking these, they are just getting removed from the uh, list, or rather pushed down on the list and sorted in a different area. So that's the third part of our workflow. Really simple, really easy. And so as you can see, we've already shortened that workflow considerably. Now the next part is the actual shopping itself. But before we get to that, remember we used to have to manually break our list into the different 
uh, stores that we would need to go to buy these different ingredients. Well, in Thanks to Airtable, we don't have that problem anymore because we've already told it where we go for these different ingredients. And so you see now on our shopping list grid view that it's grouped by sprouts and then it's also grouped by department. So we have a very easy time in the store uh, finding the different things that we need. And in this case, it looks like all of our shopping is done at sprouts. But sometimes there are those occasional one-off purchases that you might need to make uh, like, for example, you might need to get a bottle of wine or some uh, dog food or things of that nature. So I'll show you how we can add that here. We go in for these one-off purchases here. And this is, again, this is the ingredients just filtered a little bit differently. And so we have a particular view for this. And what we're looking at here is those things that we might just buy that don't pertain to a recipe in particular. So maybe we wanted to pick up a box of uh, mac and cheese. So all we would need to do is tell, uh, tell the template how many boxes we were going to purchase. And you'll notice that we have a quantity here of how many we buy at a time, and then also a uh, quantity of how many, how many times we're going to buy this quantity. So in actuality, we would buy our mac and cheese boxes from Costco, and they come in an 18-pack, and we would buy one 18-pack. That's how you would denote that. And we might also pick up a bottle of uh, yellowtail, uh, which is a red wine. And so now when we go back to that uh, shopping list, you will see these ingredients included. So here, sorted by store, we've got that Kraft Mac and Cheese. We need to swing by Costco and pick that up, pick up an 18 box. And then uh, similarly, we have a, the liquor store run here. We're getting a bottle. And then sp the Sprouts is all here. So. As you add these to your cart, if you have the mobile version of Airtable, you could then just do a quick added to cart from your phone, which would then remove these items from the list. Well, actually push them down saying that you've already made that purchase. And so it's really easy to keep track as you're in the store uh, making your purchases, what you have already purchased and what you haven't. Okay, well, as always, I hope that was very useful for you. If you'd like access to this template, this base, I will uh, provide a link in the description here. So please do check that out. You're welcome to use this base. And if you have any improvements that you have, I would be happy to hear about it. In the meantime, best of luck as you continue to grow your empire. Thanks. Mm -hmm.